Hi everybody and welcome back to Lost Genre Relationships. What would you do if you found a piece of clothing that doesn't belong to you or your partner in their room? Well, that is exactly what happened to our next OP. So let's get started with that story. This one's from user throwarray57372. I, male 20, found a male sock in my girlfriend's female 22 room. When I confronted her about it, her roommate took the blame, but I don't believe them. So, a couple of days ago, I was at my girlfriend's place cleaning her room while she was at work, which I occasionally do whenever I come over. Upon cleaning, I found a sock that didn't belong to me between her bed and nightstand. I know it's not mine, because I don't own any socks of that brand. I immediately became upset and left, but I didn't text my girl because I didn't want to jump at her, especially while she was at work, so I went home and chilled out. When she got off work and got home, we FaceTimed, and that's when I asked her, whose sock is that? She said, it's probably one of my exes before I met you. And I said, we've been dating for almost seven months. I've cleaned your room many times, and I've never noticed a sock that your ex left. I could tell that she wasn't taking me seriously until she finally said, are you trying to accuse me of cheating? And I said, no, I just want to know whose sock it is because you know that it doesn't belong to me or you. And she hung immediately after and I blew up her phone. So about 15 minutes later, she called me back. This time it was a roommate on the phone. Her roommate claimed the sock belonged to a guy she was with and it ended up there when my girlfriend and her roommate were talking, he came in and threw a sock at her. Apparently, the guy just never came back to search and get the sock. The guy was a one night stand on Tinder so she didn't have any way to contact him and confirm. So the story just had holes and felt made up on the spot. I just said okay, I really didn't believe that story, because if it was true, why didn't my girlfriend remember some guy throwing a sock at them? I'm not naive or gullible, I know it could be a lie, but I just overthink so much that I drive myself crazy. I don't want to act on anything that I'm not 100% sure about, but my gut is telling me otherwise. Do you think she's cheating? Should I investigate more or let it go? Well, this is definitely not an easy situation for OP. But before we jump to any conclusions, let's take a look at a couple of community comments with OP responses and then an update from OP to get the close on the story. Switch SCE to AUX says, You are not paranoid. Her story stinks like low tide. The problem with their story is that there are a lot of amazing coincidences in it. It's like lightning striking the same place twice. It can happen, but rarely does. For instance, why would the one-time Tinder hookup of the roommate feel so comfortable with your girlfriend that he threw a sock at her in her room? In turn, why was she so comfortable with having a stranger throw a sock at her that she didn't remember it? Was she blackout drunk? You have two choices. Leave, ding ding ding, or stay. If you stay and give her the benefit of the doubt, then make sure you never bring it up again. However, you also need to keep an eye open for little things like is she hiding her phone, etc. Or having more girls night out than she used to? If her behavior is sketchy going forward, then you've confirmed that she's cheating. OP responds, So, with the Tinder thing, I don't know how her roommate does it, but she becomes really comfortable with randoms. And if you see the roommate with a random guy together, you'd think they're a couple with how smooth they are. She had times where she sleeps with guys and they end up staying a few nights before they actually leave. Updown27 says, If she shares a washer and dryer with other people, it would be really easy to end up with a misplaced sock. OP responds, This is a really good point. I didn't think of this. But if this were the case, why would they tell me the story about a guy throwing a sock at them? Panic Bread says, You sound so paranoid. This seems like no big deal at all. Why keep obsessing over it? OP responds, I am paranoid. I get anxiety and overthink a lot. I just don't want to be made for a fool. I don't know what reason she'd have to cheat on me. Alright, so that's all the pre-information we have before going on for the update. So let's now continue with that. Update. I, male 20, found a male sock in my girlfriend's female 22 room. When I confronted her about it, her roommate took the blame, but I don't believe them. About a week ago, I posted about finding a male sock in my girlfriend's room while cleaning up. 
Here's an update. So for this last week, we've gone back and forth about it. The story has changed so many times, but I now finally got the truth. I tried to take everyone's advice and let it go, but the whole time while this was going on, I just felt like I was being stabbed in the gut. The situation went from her saying it was a roommate's guy to her saying that I planted the sock there to have an excuse to hate her and be controlling. But two days ago, she told me the truth and this is what really happened. Before her and I started dating, she told me that there were two guys that were friends who used to come over to their place and they would hook up. One guy would be for her roommate and one would be for her. Her roommate connected with the guy who she used to hook up with and since he was going, he invited his friend that my girlfriend used to hook up with. My girlfriend claimed that she had no idea that this guy was coming over. Anyways, she said feelings started coming up, so her and this guy go to her room and she told them that she had a boyfriend, but he didn't care. At first she said they just talked, then she said they kissed, and then she said he went down on her, but she stopped him. I didn't believe her one bit. I think they slept together, cause why would he take off his socks? But I guess that doesn't really matter at all. I broke up with her and I pretended not to care about her, but I'm really broken about it. She drunk called me last night asking if I still love her and after I had the strength to hang up, I almost cried. I know like I could just work it out with her, but I have a no cheating policy. I've cheated on people, people have cheated on me, so I know what it's like to be on both sides. I've watched my dad cheat on my mom growing up and seeing what it did to our family was bad. And there you go, for everybody who thought that she cheated, you called it. Cheaters suck, especially the ones that don't even have the courage to own up to the crappy things that they've done, like this girl. So not even a commentary for her, let's just move on to the next story. This one's from user dcolic19. We're having a sixth kid we can't afford, so we expect you to give us your college fund. I am female 19, my parents second child. I have three brothers, 21, 13 and 7 and a sister, 16. We grew up poor and our parents were often dependent on financial help from relatives, friends, etc for raising us. This is because even though my dad has a mediocre job and my mom doesn't work, they just kept on popping out one kid after another. My parents are very religious and believe that children are a gift from God. Personally, I think that's total BS. My parents' reproductive choices wouldn't bother me if it hadn't caused mine and my siblings' lives to turn to crap. While growing up, we never had new clothes or toys. We had to accept handouts from family members who were better off. We never went out or did anything fun. To top it off, we were well aware that the rest of the family looked down on us for constantly asking for handouts. Now, my older brother and I have managed to get into good colleges and are looking forward to a future that would be better than our parents' lives. He and I were staying at our parents' place for a while due to the lockdown. One morning, my parents called all five of us into the living room. Mom said she had great news. The smile that was forming on my face died a quick death when she said, we're pregnant. I lost my temper. I asked them how could they be so stupid and irresponsible? Do they not have enough financial troubles already that they have to bring in another mouth to feed? My older brother tried to calm me down, but I was livid. After a lifetime of scarcity because of my parents' stupidity, they still hadn't learned their lesson. I asked them how they planned to provide for the kid. My dad told me I would have to give up the money our great uncle had left me. He had left all five of us some money, which we could only access when we turned 18. I said, hell no, that money would help pay for my college expenses. He called me selfish for not being there for family. I told him if they couldn't provide for the kid, they should terminate the pregnancy. My mom started crying and called me a heartless monster. Dad told me he was disgusted with me. I told them there was no way I was going to pay for their stupidity and the only thing I would be willing to pay for is a termination. What I was really worried about was my siblings' lives getting even worse. My older brother and I have escaped our parents' clutches, but the others, especially my younger sister, will be expected to take care of this baby. 
No teenager deserves to have their adolescence ruined by diapers and a screaming baby. I know what it's like, as I had to go through that. It was expected of me to be an unpaid nanny to my younger brothers and sister. My older brother could go out with his friends and have fun, but I had to stay home and help give baths and feed the toddlers. I decided to get some family members involved so they could talk some sense into my parents. I called my mom's maternal cousin. She's one of my favorite people. When I told her that mom and dad were having another kid, she reacted with, what? Again? I told her everything and how they expected me to hand over my inheritance. She said she was going to speak to my parents and told me not to sign over anything. I promised her I wouldn't. Of course I won't. I also called two of my first cousins, one of whom is an accountant, so she could explain to my parents how much of a financial liability this baby is going to be and try to convince them to either terminate or give it up for adoption. I moved out of my parents' home a few days ago. I was only going to stay there till the lockdown was relaxed, but I just can't bear to listen to my mom's nagging about how this baby is a blessing and that I want to kill it. I've moved into a friend's basement for a minimal rent. My mom's cousin paid them a visit about a week ago and tried to tell them they weren't doing this child any favors by bringing it into a life of poverty. My mom was very rude to my aunt and told her that a woman who chose to remain barren will never understand a mother's love. My aunt never wanted kids or had any, one of the reasons she's my fave. My dad told her to get out and told me there was nothing she could do, but she did try. I didn't blame her. The cousin tried to explain the economic impact this kid would have and my mom cried about how everyone was trying to take away her baby. What the F? The intervention didn't do S. So now I've decided to cut contact with my parents. I just can't watch my family slide further and further into a hellhole. I'll be maintaining contact with my sister, 16, just to make sure my parents can't brainwash her. My older brother is going to stay in touch with all of them, which is a good thing as he can act as a link between me and the other siblings if my parents ever forbid them from talking to me. Otherwise, I'm done with these people. I totally agree with OP that her parents put her and her siblings through a difficult life. Regardless of the family support that they received, it wasn't fair of these parents to bring in so many kids that they couldn't provide for properly. That's what I believe birth control is for. I also don't think it's okay that the parents expect OP to give them her money. It's their baby, their responsibility. It is a very complex topic. However, we do know how this story finishes because OP gave us an update. So let's continue with that. Update. We're having a six kid we can't afford, so we expect you to give us your college fund. Yesterday afternoon, I got a call from my older brother. He told me that my mom miscarried. This is hardly surprising as she's in her 40s. I felt a huge wave of relief wash over me. My siblings' lives would not be worsened by my parents' insistence on adding another mouth to feed on an already tight budget. My sister would not be asked to give up her inheritance so they could have money for their new baby. My brother told me my mom had been crying and while I did feel bad for her, I was still glad to hear about the miscarriage. I feel like we all dodged a huge bullet. Bro asked me to move back in for a while to help comfort my mom. I told him I wasn't going to move in because 1. My college would reopen in a few days and 2. I'm done with all the family drama. However, I did agree to come visit my mom, if only out of courtesy. In the evening, I went to my parents' place. I took chocolate chip muffins for my mom, which I know she likes. My sister greeted me at the door and told me mom had been in bed all day. After greeting my dad, I went into their room. Mom was sitting up on the bed. I told her I was sorry about what happened and placed the muffins on the bedside table. She looked at me angrily, then threw the muffins at me. She screamed at me that she had lost her baby because of me. She said I had caused her stress and it's what caused her to miscarry. She said I was probably glad her baby was dead, which is true, but of course I didn't point that out. She called me a witch and said I wished this upon her. She was screaming so loudly all my siblings and my dad came rushing to the room. She yelled at me to get out. 
I did. I hugged my older brother and sister. Before I left, my dear dad told me my mom was right, that my cruelty caused her to miscarry. I told him that was a grossly unfair accusation and reminded him that at mom's age, it was quite common to miscarry. Then I walked out. I am so done with my parents and their stupidity, I can only hope they won't try for another kid. And there you go, the baby's not coming after all and OP's absolutely done with her family. To me, this whole story is about proper family planning. In my opinion, when you want kids, you have them, that's what birth control is for. But when you have them, you have to make sure you're in a good place to actually do that, to give these kids the life they deserve, or else it's just selfish. But like I said, that's just my opinion and this topic is highly controversial. So what do you guys think about this whole situation? Okay, and now we've reached the end of the video. I truly hope you guys liked it and it gave you food for thought. If you did like it, go ahead and click like. If you still haven't subscribed, go ahead and click subscribe and the bell so you know when I put out a new video. And don't forget to check out my other channel, LG Reddit AITA, a channel exclusively focused on a mighty a -hole. You'll find a link in the description. And having said all that, I will see you guys in the next video.